Hi, we're going to do another one of our video devotionals here at Calvary Baptist Church of Burbank. Um, this afternoon, I'm in Ephesians chapter 4, and a very well-known passage. Um, in verse 11, talking of uh, the giving of the Holy Spirit, it says in verse 11, He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, and till we attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Now, that's a pretty well-known passage, and um, I don't want to focus on the entirety of it, entirety of it in this uh, short period of time, but I want to look at one specific thing that I think is particularly relevant to us in the midst of this coronavirus season that we're in. It speaks, as you will be aware, no doubt, of the giving of the apostles and prophets. Um, that's the ministry that Paul says back in chapter 2, verse 20, is the foundation of the church, and we are being built on the, uh, the historical uh, ministry of the apostles and prophets, which we have here before us in the Word of God. And then there's the evangelists, and there are shepherds or pastors and teachers. And the pastors and teachers are, if you want to be really specific, pastors and other teachers, all pastors are teachers. Um, but it is through the, 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 the work of the apostles and prophets in the scripture, through the evangelists who share the gospel, and through the pastors and teachers who teach the word, that the saints are equipped. That's what he says here. He gave them to equip, verse 12, the saints for the work of ministry. So the ministry of the pastor ministry that essentially I'm doing right now is a ministry of equipping. I'm equipping you. And the equipping is what is done for the saints. The saints are equipped. All those who believe, all those who have been, um, who have been declared to be righteous because of their faith in Christ are saints, holy ones. And saints are equipped through this ministry. And they're equipped for their own ministry. So the saints are equipped for the work of ministry. Now, the ministry of the saints, we're told as the verse continues on, is build, for building up the body of Christ. The, the church, the body of Christ, as I'm sure we're aware, is not the building. And thank God literally for that, because we're not able to be in our building to meet at the moment. But the church is the people. The church are the saints. And whether we meet in the building right now or not, nonetheless, the work of equipping, which is done through those who share the gospel, through those who teach and minister, and through the ministry of the word, which ideally you guys are doing every day at home by yourselves, that those ministries, that those works are equipping us all so that we might do the work of ministry and build up together the body of Christ. And so the building of the church, the building of the body of Christ, does not cease because we can't get into our building to meet together. It doesn't stop. It continues on if these ministries are ongoing. And so there is the building up of the body of Christ. And again, I don't want to teach the whole passage, but just to just to point out a few things, it speaks of faith and of knowledge and of maturity. It talks of coming to a stature of the fullness of Christ. It talks about not being childish anymore and being tossed to and fro by, by uh, cunningness, craftiness and deceit. But rather, it says, speaking the truth in love, we're to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. So this equipping 
comes and brings us all together so that we are maturing as a body and we're growing in Christ likeness together. And therefore, you have this last little phrase where it says, when each part is working properly, I'm a part, you're a part, we're all parts. But when we're working properly, it makes the body grow so it builds itself up in love. And so the, the ministries that we do, if we're doing them properly, if we're doing them in love, is building each other up. My work is equipping you and your work as you are equipped is, is ministering to others. Perhaps you're equipping others. Perhaps you're encouraging others. Perhaps you're sharing the gospel. Perhaps you're growing in knowledge. Perhaps you're being convicted of sin as you read through your scriptures daily. Perhaps you're picking up the phone and reaching out to other people. But you see, the one thing that, that I think is so often missed that is just absolutely abundantly clear in this passage is that maturity is a corporate thing. It's not an individual thing. We don't get to sit at home alone and to mature. It, it doesn't work that way. We, in fact, we can't mature that way. We can't mature in isolation. Now, that's a word that we're hearing a lot right now. Isolation. We can't be a hermit and become Christ-like. It's not possible because God has designed it so that though we are all one body because we've all received the same Holy Spirit, that same spirit gifts us in different ways so that we all have different ministries. And when we have the different giftings of the Holy Spirit, the different circumstances in life, the different natural abilities uh, uh, that God has made us with, the different genetic makeup, the different social background, where all of these things to go, come together, we have unique ministries. And we need to be in the word, that's the apostles and prophets. We need to be getting teaching, whether it's what I'm able to do to you through video, going back through old sermons, reading books by other teachers or, or, or watching other sermons online or what have you. But if we are being equipped, then that equipping is equipping us for a work of ministry. Now, this is something that I think that is so easy for us to miss in normal life. Just when we come to church every Sunday, it's very easy, particularly in Bible teaching churches, for us to walk into church, to come in, sit down, say hello to a few people, sit down, be taught, sing our songs, worship God, and then go on, go on out again. And the concept of us being ministers, the concept of us doing ministry can, can quite easily not even pop into our head on a Sunday, let alone us not us doing it at all. What really should be happening on a Sunday morning is that we should be either individually or as a family or whatever our circumstances are, be praying as we go to church, before we go to church, before we get to church at least, be praying that God would use us to minister to others. And if we have a need, if there's areas of our life that we need correction in, if there's, if there's encouragement we need to have, if there's answers we need to find, be praying that others would minister to us. And we need to see church as not simply being a place where we gather together socially to get uh, teaching in a corporate setting, but rather it is the place where ministry happens. Now, having said all of that, it makes the whole coronavirus situation look a lot worse than maybe it looked before. If you hadn't thought about it in these terms, you're saying, well, if that's the case, then there's even worse that we're not meeting as a church. Well, let's look at it as a blessing. Let's look at it as us now without having the excuse of, well, I turned up at church to allow us to avoid the actual work of ministry. Now we haven't got that cover. We don't have that way of kind of, you know, pretending that we're doing it, kidding ourselves. That's gone. We don't have that right now. So the question then remains, how are we ministering? Now, first of all, we've got to be equipped. And I'm doing what I can through these videos to, to equip you um, and to have some regular teaching coming in that's fresh for you. But at the same time, unless you've been at the church for the entirety of the four plus years that I've been here, there's a lot of material going back for you to catch up on. So there's plenty of other things. And of course, there are many, many other great teachers, many better than I out there as well. And you can be um, listening to and, and learning from and catching up with some reading and, and, and making the most of your time and being equipped. But the other question is, how are you ministering? And are others able to minister to you? Now, 
obviously we live in a technological era. I don't want this to be a session where I'm telling you all the practical ways in which you can do it because you can probably think of them as well or better than I can. But it may simply be as simple as sending a message, sending an email, picking up a telephone, reaching out to people, reaching out to those whom you have connected with that you are close to, but also reaching out to those that maybe would just get forgotten about or, 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 or doesn't ha wouldn't necessarily have someone obvious to connect with. Some people are going to be more isolated. Maybe they're a high risk kind of person, the, the older. Um, maybe they live alone and they're not part of a family. Maybe someone is an essential worker and they're having to go out and, and, and work still and other people aren't and they're working from home and all of our situations are different. But the, the question is, are we ministering to those people? At our church, we have a church directory. You can pick it up and you can go through and you can see everybody uh, who, at least at the start of the year, was part of our church. And so there's a way to, to keep up and catch up with people. And we all need that. We all need that ministry. And I hope and I pray that coronavirus, rather than taking away the opportunity for ministry, which of course is going to do to some degree, I pray that it would expose the lack of ministry, perhaps, that we, that we are guilty of. And it would be an opportunity for us to actively make an effort to go out and to love one another. Because, quite frankly, the fate of the church rests upon it. We are supposed to be growing, becoming more Christ-like, becoming more mature in our faith. And we can't do it alone. We need each other. And so my prayer is that we would, in this season, learn to minister like never before. For Christ's sake and for the sake of his church.